Well, hello, greetings, good good morning to the US, good afternoon to uh, Europe, and good evening to uh, India and the rest of the locations around there. My name's DJ Q Macro. It's great to have you on board again. Uh, this is another episode in uh, Hands on SAP Dev. I'm looking. I'm looking up there because that's me. But the camera's down here. So yes, Hands on SAP Dev. Um, this is one of those regular fortnightly midweek streams on Wednesday. We still have our regular weekly Friday episodes. Um, this is a particularly special one. I've been looking forward to this uh, immensely because we've got a couple of uh, special guests. So who have we got on the stream already? Ronnie, welcome. Napit, welcome. Um, Pierre, great to see you. Helmut, good afternoon from a sunny Hanover where I think if I'm correct, uh, it's a holiday in Germany, isn't it? Srikanth, hi there. Tiago, nice to see you, Tiago. Uh, that's wonderful. Um, so yes, we have two special guests, and obviously if you've seen any of the tweets, uh, you'll know that it's Ronnie, Ronnie Sletter, and also, hey, Lucia, hello! Uh, and also Napit, two awesome folks from our live stream community in the uh, SAP Dev Ecosphere community in general. Um, so we're going to have those two folks on shortly. Uh, first of all, uh, let me go through uh, a few bits and pieces. Um, I've got, I'm set up here in, I'm in an SAP office in London, in Blackfriars. Uh, I'm in a small, one of those small meeting rooms, a big screen in front of me on the wall, but my laptop's down here. It's quite nice, although it is like being in a cell. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let me press on to the main scene. And I want to take you through, oh, of course, yes, it's a day of work. Uh, um, and so it's a holiday, yes, perfect. Um, yes, they will be great, uh, Lucia, Napit and Ronnie will be awesome. Um, let me, uh, first of all, uh, draw your attention to uh, a colleague uh, of Lucia's and mine, um, Scott Dillon. Uh, he's based over in Toronto in Canada um, and working at SAP and he has got this website called YSAP, YSAP Cloud Platform and he's got a series of recordings of these uh, garage or garage depending on where you're from workshops. Um, he's been running these workshops. Let me just post the link to that. Hey Mahesh, welcome! Link to that in the chat but maybe, maybe more um, precisely uh, this page shows us all about what he's been doing with these garage sessions, um, which you can join, register for and join. I think they're every month. And the recordings are available on YouTube as well. So there's the YouTube playlist. And you can see from there we've got all sorts of uh, different things within the uh, SAP Cloud Platform uh, context, workflow service, integration services, API management, and so on. And the latest one he did with... Uh, an old friend and colleague of mine, uh, Michael Graff. Uh, it's not on there yet, I don't think, but the latest one was UI5. So look forward to seeing that appear on the playlist shortly. So there we go. There's, there's Scott Dillon um, and uh, his uh, garage sessions that are available for re-watching on the playlist. Um, I'd like to point out uh, some other uh, coding live streamers that I, I uh, follow and watch on Twitch. And today I want to point out uh, a person called Brendan, Brendan Enric, uh, who goes by the uh, handle of Dev Chatter. So um, here we go. There's the link to Brendan uh, there, uh, Dev Chatter on twitch.tv. Um, he does all sorts of uh, coding in the Microsoft space, C Sharp, um, and, uh, but, and, and also some, some JavaScript, as well. JavaScript as well. One of the things he's doing, though, at the moment is building uh, a little application, web-based application, um, it's a little bit sort of meta. It's, it's to help folks discover more uh, coding uh, live streams. So yeah, really good. I definitely recommend it. I enjoy watching watching uh, Brendan on that. So that's that. Uh, Dev Chatter on Twitch. Um, one other piece of news: uh, there was an update to the SAP Web IDE, uh, specifically in relation to. Hey, uh, welcome MKGE seventy five. Is that how I pronounce it? MKGE. Shall I just say that? Welcome. Anyway, hi. Um, yeah, there was an update to some of the uh, stuff relating to oh SD SDK SD Laksh. Thank you for following. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, Michael. Michael. Okay. Ah, yes. Ah, I think I did know that, didn't I, Michael? Sorry about that. And thank you for following SDK Lash. 
Splash. Um, so yeah, update to some of the um, uh, mechanisms inside Web IDE to make development of Node.js based uh, cloud application programming uh, simpler and more streamlined and also of course updated for um, CAP version 3. There was support in the past in Web IDE for uh, Node.js based CAP applications, um, but that was for a previous version of 2.0, previous major work version of CAP. So have a look at that. Um, in fact, here I've just played around with it just before, and you can see here's a here's a, uh, a project that I just generated from the wizard, and it's really nice to, to watch sort of the, the 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 log messages go by. And I noticed here down at the bottom, I'm not sure. Um, you know, these these are sort of like what, uh, 24 seconds apart. I'm not sure whether it decided to use a different version. But anyway, the language server 207. That's that's the language server version that's available in the latest uh, VS Code extension. So basically, they're sort of you know compatible with each other, and it's using the CDS compiler version 1.10. There, um, I think in the uh, VSIX extension for VS Code, it's got the language compiler 1.9, which is on there. I'm not quite sure why there is two messages here, but anyway, if anybody can take a guess, let me know. Um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to playing around with that. Um, immensely. So let's just get rid of that and that. And now let me um, point your attention to uh, our first guest. Uh, he is known to all of us here, or most of us, uh, as Ronnie, and one of the uh, live stream family members, uh, I think from the start as well. Hey, Thomas, welcome. Um, oh, Yes, sorry, sorry, yes. What was that link to the uh, Web IDE blog entry? Thank you very much for reminding me. Let's just go back there and um, there we go. T, 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 there we go. There it is. Thank you very much. Nice little uh, question there, Thomas. Thank you for, uh, Tom, thank you for um, reminding me to put that in. Yes, perfect. Um, so here's Ronnie. And Ronnie's going to talk to us about. Uh, some really cool stuff in terms of setting up shell environments and so on. Um, before I dial Ronnie in, that's a technical term, I'm going to also uh, introduce you to uh, another person that should be very familiar, which is Napheat. Um, here's Napheat uh, on the uh, SAP community, uh, also I think a member of the hands-on SAP dev uh, family right from the start. So there we go, there's there's uh, Napheat in the URL. Uh, context and let me now close this and bring in Ronnie. I'm going to dial Ronnie. Calling Ronnie. Here we go. Let me just move that to the other screen. Ooh, that's me. My goodness, that's a little bit big. Let me make that smaller for a second. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, DJ. Welcome. Welcome. Is this a little bit sort of inception? You're sort of watching yourself, really talking about your, you're watching yourself, watching yourself, watching yourself, or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Great to have you on. Um, I'm sure the folks, I'm going to go back to my chat here, I'm sure the folks looking sharp, yes, he is looking sharp, or do you mean me? I'm sure you don't mean me, Lucia. <laughs> Thank um, you. I'm sure the folks will let me know uh, how the audio is. So, Ronnie, welcome, well, I was going to say welcome to the show. What is this? A show? Welcome to uh, the live stream uh, episode 22. Why don't we start you. by you telling us a little bit about yourself and also what you're going to be talking about. Yeah, um, tell me about myself. Um, I started to work uh, with SAP uh, technology for about four years ago. Uh, before that, I was uh, 15 years in the army, so I'm an army officer. That changed my um, career. Excellent. And um, sort of Coincidentally, I ended up working with uh, SAP Tech because uh, I worked with a guy uh, at my last um, place where I served, and he said, uh, "You're uh, leaving in a couple of years, aren't you? And you're a nerd, and I know this nerd you're in nerd. Oslo. Yeah, and I know this nerd in Oslo, and he works with something called the SAP, and you should talk to him. And that's how I got into SAP. So um, I've been working with that, and primarily." Uh, with the SAP uh, UI5 and uh, Fury. Fantastic. SAP UI5 uh, and Fury, two good subjects. Yeah, and uh, I know ABAP, of course. And ABAP, uh, three good subjects. Yeah. yeah. Um, my mentor uh, has this uh, saying that the ABAP, uh, ABAP is the life. 
So that was <laughs> what it taught me. So even though I focused on uh, UF5, uh, ABAP is life. ABAP is life. <laughs> yeah. But uh, as I said, I'm a nerd and I'm proud of it. And uh, I've been uh, been a nerd since as long as I can remember. Been working with computers, and uh, that's primarily what I do. And um, I thought it was a bit funny that you wanted me to talk about this uh, subject because this is actually something uh, I've been familiar with the terminal uh, for many years. But it's just recently that I actually did something like this and. Uh, Working with the dot files mm -hmm. and actually, um, actually um, doing some automation. So um, my history with the terminal goes all the way back to like I think ninety six or something. Uh, I remember uh, oh, jumping only on as the... far back as that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember jumping on a train. I had to travel like thirty minutes to a place where there was a bookstore that would have Linux books in them. Because oh, I I yes. I'd, I'd read in a magazine about something called Linux, and I bought this giant book with a CD, uh, and it was Slackware. I guess it must be oh, version three point oh or something, yeah. and um, it was an insane learning curve. Yes. So so I I, I kind of fell off the train back then, and uh, the next time I uh, came back to the terminal was around two thousand and three, I think, right. when I got a twelve inch PowerBook G four. Oh. And uh, and the entry to terminal was that uh, by using the terminal, it enabled me to customize the OS. So that was my sort of the first real entry yeah. to using the yeah. terminal. This is this is a nice theme, right? The, the terminal. I mean, it's been a sort of theme throughout our episodes of the live stream so far, and I'm really, really, really excited to to see what you got to show us. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah. So so uh, moving forwards. Um, Around 2004, 2005, uh, I came back to Linux uh, when Ubuntu came out. Uh, but then again, it was uh, on the desktop. But I started to dabble with servers. And uh, around two, uh, 2010, I started with uh, virtualizing. So I have like a home lab <laughs> in, uh, in my basement. In your basement, excellent. Yeah, well, oh, it, it sounds like something big, but it actually is an uh, Intel NUC. <laughs> so it's <laughs> on the side of the case. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I virtualize servers. So and when I need to try something out, uh, I just spin up a virtual server. Yeah. And, and I, um, I sort of I hate infrastructure. To me, infrastructure is something I need to do the things I really want to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I usually just spin up a virtual server and don't do anything special on it. And then, if I need something, if I'm working with Docker, I have to install that and uh, and all of that. And I never did anything with Vim, for instance. <laughs> yeah, shocking. Uh, I, 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 it's probably like cursing, but I usually use the uh, Nano <laughs> for editing and end call. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, then a couple of years ago. I got to know about, Vim, or actually, I knew about Vim, but, but I was one of those that I got into Vim, and then I just closed the session <laughs> because I couldn't get out. <laughs> so, yeah, so a familiar story, I think. I'm sure. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, then uh, a couple of months ago, I had troubles with my work laptop, a MacBook Pro, mm -hmm. and I had to get it into service, and then I had to reinstall macOS. Uh, four times in a month, right? And and it, and it dawned on me that I have been creating a bash profile file a couple of years ago mm -hmm. just to make the terminal look like I want to. Yeah, yeah. But when I uh, I had to reinstall macOS four times in a month, and then a fifth time on my home computer, I start, started to think that this could probably be done in a better way, and also I could m probably make it in a way that can help me when I'm spin up these virtual servers. Uh, so that was what made me uh, look into uh, the dot files again. So that leads us nicely on mm -hmm. to dot files, right? So yeah. tell you what, why don't you share your screen? <laughs> I'll um, try. Show us the, <laughs> sh try and share your screen. And I'll, yeah. we can start off by, um, you can explain to the folks here online um, what the what dot files are and, and what we're looking at, first of all. Yeah. Okay, share Perfect. screen. I make this, I make this full and I have again. to select which screen. 
I'll oh, see, so you now you're just showing off. Which screen? Which of the four different screens? <laughs> I, I, I have two. <laughs> uh, I think that was is the correct. Do you see? Yeah, I can, see your, code? I can see your screen. VS Code, yes. Yeah, great. OK, so um, start off with what is a dot file? Uh, a dot file is just <laughs> a file that has a dot in front. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> okay, just kidding. Uh, what it is is that um, all the different tools, or not all, but many uh, of the different tools, and probably all in the shell, I think, because that's just by mm -hmm. default, or what do you call it, by uh, best practice, yep. uh, uh, is that the config for all the tools are in a file with a dot in front, and by having that dot in front, the files are invisible. Yes, exactly. By, so by, by, by normal, normal directory listing, you don't see those so, files. Yeah. So uh, if you, we, we can actually look if we look at my terminal here. When I when I list the uh, directory. Oh, do you want to make your uh, font a little bit bigger? Oh, oh sorry. Please, Ronnie. Maybe a couple of goes. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's that's nice. That, right? That's more. Yeah. yeah. So when I uh, listed my directory here, you can see that uh, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, six files and a folder. Uh, but in the side here, we can see that there's a lot of more files. If you use uh, this tags, <laughs> we can get see all the files. We can see the hidden files too. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's called the dot files. Yes. And, and what we can see here on the side is that I have a couple of dot files that do different things. So we could probably go through them. Yeah, please. Oh, let's, let's have a look. Uh, we can start with the, something we talked a lot about, uh, is Vim. Oh, yes. And also, by the way, uh, Helmut comments on the, uh, on the stream here. Everyone yeah. has had this Vim experience, right? How, how can you exit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone's is, is stuck. So uh, we can start with Vim. Uh, Vim has a config file called vimrc. I think the, yeah, the rc is quite a common ending for these dot files, for these yeah. config. It's called, I think it's short for run configuration, isn't it? I will not argue with that. It sounds plausible. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what this is, is actually just, it's just a set of configurations uh, that tells Vim what to do at startup. Mm -hmm. so, and I, I, I don't want to go through the whole Vim config because Actually, I just stole it from probably you or something. <laughs> oh, I recognize the uh, turn off arrow keys, yeah. which, I, which I stole from somewhere else as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that is, that is the thing. Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have them on GitHub just to show off or, or anything. I, what, the reason I have them is because uh, of ease of getting to them yes. when I need them. Yes. But by having them uh, public, uh, anyone that wants to can go and look at my dot files and they can either say, oh, this is crap, or they can take something out if they will want to something. Yes. And that is also something really important, I think, that you don't just uh, clone a Git repository and use someone else's dot files. You customize them to your need, exactly. but get inspiration from others. I've just, I've just posted the uh, link to your dot files GitHub repo on the chat. Yeah. Right, so, so, so I have this uh, vimrc so that is my vim config, mm -hmm. and then of course I use tmux. Of course. So uh, <laughs> we covered so tmux that... a little bit. We used tmux in uh, a few previous episodes, didn't we? I, I think you have. Yeah. Uh, so of course tmux has another config, and it's just primarily something of how the looks, and then it's a lot of key bindings. Exactly. So you're you're so, using the control A as a as a prefix key as well, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I it's my 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 fingers are like I can't twist them. Yeah, control B is quite hard so, to. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. Okay, and you have to stop me if I'm just rambling about. And also the chat has to stop me. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Go on, go on. <laughs> so so that is like the two two main, and then the most important one is uh, the config for the shell itself. And and here we get into what I've done special with my config mm -hmm. and that I made it like a cross-platform because I want to be able to use the same both, uh, both on Ubuntu and Mac OS. Yeah. So uh, we get into the first thing is that 
uh, the shell config on the Mac OS is called the bash profile and uh, on uh, Linux is uh, bash RC. So, so there we have like the first where it differs. Yeah, I, I think there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of sort of historic confusion between bash profile and bash RC. Mm -hmm. I think it might be that they both exist on both platforms, but they're, they're used slightly differently. I can't, mm -hmm. I've got this vague it recollection that on, on Mac OS, when you open a terminal emulator, mm -hmm. um, it runs each um, sort of uh, interactive session as a, as, a, as, a, as a login session. I think Bash RC is run when it's not a login session or something like that anyway. But it, yeah. it might be, you're, you're way deeper than I have ever gone. Oh, so, yeah. so I, I thought it might have something to do with that Mac OS is based on BSD yeah. and, and not Linux. But the thing is that I've sort of created a solution for it. Good. So, so, so what I have done, we can take a look at, start to take a look at my Bash RC first. Mm -hmm because that is my Linux config. And uh, what I do there is I just load bash profile. <laughs> yes, in fact, that's, that's like the solution for many uh, of this sort of, uh, this, this sort of conflict between bash profile and bash RC and the confusion. Yeah, just, just point to the other one. And then, because what I've done now, is, as long as I um, maintain the bash profile, the bash RC will work. Yeah. And then uh, we will see that I have some, um, Bash scripting in the Bash profile to to care take care about uh, these um, these um, uh, differences between the platforms. So Helmut has already said on the chat that he's going to start stealing your uh, your configuration, which is the whole point, right? Uh, yeah, steal steal away. Like, uh, well, whatever. <laughs> Was it um, good artists imitate great artists steal? Steal. Yes. And by the Someone way, uh, for those wondering, like that line two there, that first thing is a. Is a condition to see if the prompt has already been set, mm -hmm. and if it if it hasn't, then yeah. Okay. Uh, right, and then before we look at the Bash profile, I would like to just talk about all the files I have here because we can see that there's more than Bash profile. Mm -hmm. And and what I have done is that in the Bash profile, I had just a basic configuration, and then. Uh, to prevent the batch profile to, to get bloated, I have uh, taken the different parts that usually stayed in the batch profile into separate files. Nice. So all my aliases are in an aliases file. So these are just aliases I use. And uh, uh, functions, I have a couple of functions. Like I have this one is quite nice. <laughs> short, uh, short route into my repositories. Oh yeah, I mean these things are all all, so, all helpful, right? And also uh, help me if I don't remember my own config. Oh, by the way, um, Tiago is asking, and I was wondering about this. And I, yeah. I think we saw it when we had Christian Georgi on from SAP, looking at the cap stuff. Um, he also had this in his VS Code, uh, mm -hmm. um, and I think oh. Uh, Napheat has already answered it. Which is the plugin or the, the extension in VS Code that shows the git commit where it says it right mm -hmm. at the top, you eight days ago. That's called git lens is, is the extension? Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's git lens. I think I have it here. Nice one. Nice one, Napheat. Uh, yeah. Oh, also, also um, Tom, I'm git a freak. Lens. Good programmers write good code. Great programmers reuse good programmers code. Nice. So yeah, git lens. Uh, let's return. Um, where was I? You were looking. Uh, we looked at the functions. We just about yeah to functions. Go a bit so it's down. just a, I have one function. <laughs> that's probably or I have two. The help me is also a function. Yeah. So. Uh, and then uh, I have this uh, MVM path, and that is because I use MVM to load Node, mm -hmm. and MVM loads. Uh, it's a bit different on macOS and Linux, so I have just used the uh, Pull that out in its own file, and and then I use conditionals. Yeah, that's, to see that's if it's nice. Dar Darwin is Mac OS uh, or a Linux GNU is yeah. for Linux. So that returns then the right config for what uh, environment it's in. Yeah, NVM is great for managing Node. As well. Yeah, I really like it. Yeah. And then we can go to my Bash profile and look at it. Saving the best to last. 
Yeah. Uh, or actually, that is not the best, actually. Ooh. <laughs> oh, this is the config. So here we have uh, some, uh, this git completion. This, that's a script that's provided by, I don't know, don't remember if it's GitHub or something, or it's always no, part of Git, I think, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I got it from uh, the Git repository, I think. Yeah. So it's just some helper uh, stuff. And uh, then the first uh, conditional is that uh, when I'm on macOS, I load uh, this, Git prompt. Yep. And that gives you a nice display of the branch you're on, for example, if you are in a Git repo, right? Yeah, if you look at my uh, my uh, down here. Yeah, there we go. This is the master branch. And uh, then uh, I load in my files, and I've stolen this. This is it's actually someone else, I think, in my readme. I mentioned uh, where I've gotten the really inspiration. It was um, the Corey Schaefer's oh, yes. uh, YouTube videos. Yes. Uh, where I... I it, it stumbled upon a video of his, and that was was triggered me to just do this. And uh, and uh, this uh, loading of files was when I just uh, I can use scripting. So so I said so this just loads all my extra files and makes it a part of the config. Very nice, very nice. And, and then we have this uh, NDM path, and the reason I could have all this from NDM path in there. But it's easier to just have it in an external file and just yeah. just to not not again to load. Uh, exactly. I mean, modularization is always, uh, yeah. always something to be considered. Uh, and then I have a, if I have installed Visual Studio Code, I just load the path in, mm -hmm. or load it into my path to just say code dot to open it, and I have some. Um, This is probably T native script, I think. <laughs> I was going to say, what's TNS? I've not heard of TNS. I, th I think it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's native script. Ah, right, OK. Yeah. So I uh, thought it's TypeScript, but that is TSC. TSC, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so. Oh, it's nat native script. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's also uh, it's conditional. So if the file is there, load it. So, And, uh, and then I have uh, my prompt. And this is blatantly stolen from someone else. I. So this is, I have no idea. I, I know that this just defines a color and we make put it in the variables mm -hmm. to make it easier down here where we actually build our exactly. uh, prompts. Yeah, these are sort of um, escape codes, aren't they? Are they sort of yeah. ANSI escape codes or at least terminal escape codes? I'm not quite sure. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, and there's a, there's a real sort of uh, industry of, I think they call it ricing, don't they? Ricing your setup, whether it's the terminal based or whether it's mm -hmm. like a Windows uh, manager based thing. Yeah, really cool. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm so, desperate to see what's uh, inside of this bootstrap thing, uh, mm -hmm. because that is what, where 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 the fun starts, and and um, I will demonstrate this. Oh, cool! Yes. Before. But but what I've done, because my plan is that okay, I have a fresh system. What now? Mm -hmm. And 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 earlier I was just uh, okay I went to github and I clicked download to download the bash profile file and put it in and that's okay if you just have one file and then I started the okay I do have a, a remember everything I have installed and and I install something and I do it manually and then two weeks later I oh I remember one more thing yeah so I thought why don't I just automate this perfect so so we have a config, that's one part, and then I have these scripts, Mac OS and, and uh, Ubuntu. Well, tell you what, here's a suggestion we've got. I was going to say, mm -hmm. um, let's spend five more minutes on this, because obviously I've got uh, Nabheat as well waiting in the yeah. wings. Can, can, can we see the demo? And then uh, then we'll see the demo, then we'll maybe better understand what these scripts are doing if we do get a chance yeah, to look sure. into sure. Perfect. Sure. Um, OK, I'll <laughs> just try to do this now. Uh, Demo is always good. Yeah, it's scary. But I have um, doing my trick with uh, just loading in my iPad into. Um, oh, that's right. Yes, because you use an iPad for your sort of um, your really nice portable because this, terminal. Because this this is what one of the reasons why I need this because iPads are not very good at doing development. So what I have done is I do, uh, I have created a virtual Ubuntu server on my uh, home lab. And I 
log into that using a Blink shell. Mm -hmm. And I uh, can develop on that. And that's why I need to learn yeah. WIM, because I don't have VS Code on exactly. the uh, server. So what I have here is the Blink shell. And I will just uh, search into the hands-on subdev server, hopefully. And yes, I'm there. Nice. And then I have my dot files. And I can go in. Um, and get my uh, this. Um, oh, it's very hard. Oh, I can show you probably here. Can you see my? Pointer? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I can see. Yes, we can see a this, I just have to copy in this line. Yeah. To, and I have actually cheated a bit. Oh, can't get to it now. Er, come on. <laughs> so this is. So you're about to clone. You're cloning the there. repo, right? There we go. There oh, it, I, I'll just. I just have to get all of this. Yes. Here's, here's something I prepared earlier. Yeah, that's how we do it, isn't it? And then I go back, and I can just close this. And then I uh, copy this in. And what I say is that I git clone and my .files mm -hmm. repository into my, this did not work good. And I have to clone it into some place. .files. And then uh, I automatically just move into that directory. Mm -hmm. And I run the bootstrap script. OK. And I get, I ask myself, do I want to do this? Yes. And do I want to bootstrap the environment? And we can look afterwards what the difference is. Yeah. And then I have to take a password. So what the, the machine we're on is like a freshly installed VM. Right? This is a completely fresh install. Uh, I only cheated with one thing, and that is I upgraded it because that takes five minutes yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it has just uh, Ubuntu upgrades. But besides that, uh, everything is uh, fresh. So I just uh, install uh, a lot of stuff. And we can look at it, and then I install NVM and. Uh, uh, the latest LTS of Node, mm -hmm. and uh, I install a couple of uh, Node global packages. I think it's CDS and a couple of others. Of course, the most important ones. The <laughs> most important one. Uh, and then uh, it, it takes some time. So the yeah, so the NVM mm -hmm. allows us to say, well, just give me the the long term support version, yeah. whatever the latest is, just by. The, it, Minus, I minus think it's LTS. actually yeah. it's, it's just mvm install dash dash lts yeah. and you get it. Yeah, that's nice. Takes too much time. We're almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> if we do run out of time, maybe we can have you back on the next Wednesday one and you can explain. I would love to see an explanation of this bootstrap script in, in more detail, but let's, let's, let's see yeah. how far we can get. Then it, then it says, so uh, we have to now source the bash RC. So this is running the, the contents of that file the, in, this, in the context of where we are right now. And you see that my, my, my prompt has changed. Beautiful. So I can now T into Tmux and V into Vim, and we'll get some errors. And that's because my environment in Vim is not uh, installed. Ah, which uh, which plugin manager are you using here in Vim? Oh, I don't remember. I'll check it out when Nabid gets on. So cool. Okay. And then we're out again. And if we just V, and I'm in. So I just bootstrap my whole environment. That's fantastic. So right. So you've mm. gone from um, nothing. Nothing. Creating it. Well, you create. You created the VM. And, and the, started, it right? was there. The VM yeah, was the there. The VM was there with the an upgrade, but it was it was completely bare bones VM, bare mm -hmm. bones Ubuntu system. And now it's completely customized to uh, to what your tastes. Yeah, and you can do that as well on a macOS device because yeah. of the conditionals you've got in your script as well. Yeah, and I can uh, others can go into my repository and look and at the macOS and Ubuntu scripts if we would I want to. But we can just check Bootstrap and what it does is it just um, symlinks my config files. Nice. And uh, then it asks, do you want to bootstrap? And I, when I say yes, it runs the bootstrap scripts. And it runs one of these two scripts. Yeah. Awesome. And that's, that's it. And, and those scripts are 
what you call uh, simulations of me doing things yeah, manually. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, it, it's just line by line doing what I used to do manually. That's brilliant. So we've already got some great feedback in the channel. Uh, great work, Ronnie, says Helmut. And uh, well, Shrikan thanks. Says amazing. Um, so yeah. that, is, that is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And I do think that um, rather than rush through it now, if we can get you on again on another Wednesday and you can explain a little bit more about what's inside the, uh, the Mac OS and the, or either of the two. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. And just maybe go through it a little bit step by step. So mm -hmm. folks, folks on the channel as well, let me know um, and let Ronnie know if that would be a, a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Can I just plug one thing before yes. I leave? Plug, plug, plug. Yeah, because uh, you guys probably know I'm doing this. Ah, uh, nicely done. Mm hmm And um, the plan is um, tonight we're going to drop the agenda. Or actually, we're not going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so so uh, if people are excited uh, about that um, Definitely. tonight, I'm just I'll probably in. have the agenda out. Awesome. So I'm just pasting into the chat. Mm -hmm. The wiki page for Inside Track Oslo, 17th of August, 2019. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Okay, thank, Ronnie, thank you very much indeed. Let me let me um, let me uh, let's see your face again, and you can wave us. Okay, as I we, have as to we... see if this works. Now. This is uh, if I stop sharing screen, I either now disconnect. <laughs> oh, don't worry, don't worry. Actually, no. That's, that's, oh, there we go. I'm here. <laughs> Fantastic, Ronnie. Perfect. Thank yeah. you very much. Right, stay on the channel. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, of course. And thank you for being on. Uh, I'm a, I'm a disconnect to and connect to Nappy. One second. Yeah. Bye. Well, sort of not bye. Right, so let me go on now to um, Nappy. Uh, here we go. Nappy, I guess you're still there. So I'm going to make a call to Nappy. Move that down here. There we go. Please answer. Oh, that was quick. Hey, Napit. Hi, everyone. Good Hi, evening. Dear. Great to see you. And by the way, I'm keeping the video display small because I, I was getting some buffering issues with the, you know, all the movement on the thing. Uh, so yeah, so welcome, welcome, Napit, to the uh, to this episode. Tell us Thank a bit you, about yourself. Dear. Tell us a bit about yourself. I think most people know who you are, but uh, just in case. So uh, a quick introduction might be like, uh, I've been working in ABAP. I'm also an ABAPer for the last 12 years. And uh, have been, uh, for the last two, three years, I've been getting my hands dirty in different technologies like container, UI5, your, you know, there is a lot of things and hopefully trying to get my head around so that at least I understand what you are talking about or somebody else is talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that's a bit about me. Brilliant. Yeah. And what are you going to talk to us about today or show us? I, well, I, I've got a yeah. good idea, but um, and I'm quite excited. Tell, tell the folks what yeah. you're going to talk about. Yeah. So basically, we are going to talk about how do we deploy our cloud cap and base application onto Google Cloud Run, right? So let me just quickly share my screen. Oh, perfect. Let yes. Let me make this full screen. Yeah. Now. You're sharing your screen. Yeah. So can you see my screen? Uh, yes, we can. Good. So uh, let me spend first two, three minutes and, um, you know, about the basics, right? And then eventually after two, three minutes, once we have set the context, we'll move towards uh, the demo time. Right? I'm, I'm not sure so that you, this, you might be sharing the wrong screen because I can still see my... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the trigger for my learning started from this blog by Lucia. So Lucia is already Ooh, there. Yeah. So thanks for actually... <laughs> I got... You know, she, she blogged about her experience running with, you know, deploying a Node.js or Express app onto the Google Cloud run. That is what something which actually got me interested. Mm -hmm. So I actually started from there to understand why if this Node.js Express app can be deployed there, why can't we deploy our Capm based app, which is also certainly uses the Node.js or Express kind of a framework, right? Yeah. So that is where it started and then eventually uh, to set the context, uh, uh, what we have in this is overall right now, whatever is going on is we are seeing one side is talking about serverless functions, right? Yep. So everybody is talking about serverless functions where we basically have our business logic running and we don't care about who, who is going to basically, uh, who will basically manage the environment, right? And who is responsible for uptime and everything, right? So it is basically the service provider responsibility, right? So yeah. that is one side which is happening. In parallel, uh, 
uh, one downside which I see in serverless function is you have a limitation by environment. For example, somewhere you can code in Node.js or Java or somewhere in Python, but you're not you don't have a free hand, right? And in parallel, we see this rising concept of uh, containers, images, which are self-contained environment, where you basically have your uh, uh, the programming runtime and everything is you know contained as an image and which can be deployed as a container, right? Yeah. But while deploying those things as a container, right, it, it takes a lot of effort. You need to create pods. You need to be worried about scalability. You need to be worried about, uh, you know, what is a, uh, how the data will be persisted and so many things, right? And in, in fact, I, you know, I tried my hand, blogged about it, and it, it takes a lot of time. So this gap, so I, I believe as Google find this gap that why don't we have why don't we move or expand this concept of serverless functions to serverless containers? So everything serverless. You don't care about scalability. You don't care about uh, security, mm -hmm. availability. It is a service provider which is responsible, right? So that is nothing. So bringing serverless to container is what is Google Cloud Run all about. Gotcha. Okay. Now, so you must be thinking, okay, if we are talking about Google Cloud Run, being run every you know what what will happen to the existing google cloud uh, this google Kuber, the kubernetes uh, uh, cluster which we are already running right mm -hmm. so this google cloud run is you can use it in two ways one you can use it individually right as in all you need to do is you deploy your image and it is going to run automatically all scaling everything will be responsibility of google let the service provider take care and other ways for the existing kubernetes one it act as a complementary. Okay, it helps you. Although you have a greater control over how many ports you want, how many replicated sets you want, or how many, uh, how do you do a persistent storage? But it will help you in easing out the things. So, so in a nutshell, Google Cloud Run is serverless container. So this is what is the basic, right? Yep. And uh, then now, what we are going to do? So we have our Capm based app, which is nothing but uh, uh, the developer tutorial, which you know everyone here is most familiar with, right? Everyone understands how it works, right? Yeah. So basically, there we have uh, books and authors. They are being deployed to a SQL or to a HANA, whatever, right? And so we'll be deploying it first to the uh, Google Cloud Platform local VM, right? We'll run it locally, mm -hmm. number one. Then we will run it, basically, we'll make an image of it, right? A self-contained image, and then we will deploy it as a container, which will be basically uh, running it as a uh, serverless way. Wow, right? nice. Okay. So, so, so these are the three steps. I think I have made enough of my th theories, right? So I, I would actually like to now go towards straight to the demo time, which is a bit easier, right? Yes, perfect. So uh, I hope you can see my screen. So this, what you see is, mm -hmm. uh, this is a Google Cloud Platform console. Good thing about this is, the moment you register, you get three hundred dollars free or twenty one thousand rupees free. So, which is enough to run for a. I am running it for the last one year free, of course. My different uh, trials or my different adventures, which I do, I do it free, of course, right? Even the charges are also with less. So, all you need to do is register. So, once you are inside the console, you need to click on menu and you go down and inside compute. You see cloud functions where. Google has also its own cloud function like SAP has, right? The, yep. the serverless function. So we this is the thing, cloud run, right? So the cloud run is the one where you do a serverless container, right? You see these two, these two, what we do here is we create a service around a container. So these two are the existing one. Of course, before you know coming here, I was actually trying it out and in, just to make sure everything works fine in the sure. demo, right? So all you need to do is you need to click here, create service and give your URL, right? This URL is nothing but the URL of your image which you have made. Right mm -hmm. now, I already have so many images. We will not be using them. We'll be making oh an image goodness. right from the start. So I've been trying to do so many things. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's it's fun. So, so we'll make our own image and um, we'll have we'll see, right? So, so now let's start with how do we basically have our app, right? copied into this local VM or into Google Cloud. Yep. So one of the great things which I liked about Google Cloud is this cloud shell, right? For yes, example, awesome. in Cloud Foundry or in our SAP, we need to install our SDK and do stuff. Same here, Google Cloud also has its own SDK, G Cloud, right? But this this is, I, I, I found this because it's browser-based and it's very powerful. Yeah. Okay. 
So now the moment, I hope this connection works. <laughs> and this it's, also the, has, the, the, this Cloud Shell also has the G Cloud uh, tools already pre-installed, right? And you can, yes, it also yes. has a persistent five gig storage for you. Yes, so so the moment you say it's a five GB you get persistent storage, apart from it, you have Git, you have Node, all those things. And you've got Vim, available. of course. Yeah, Vim is, as always. <laughs> so. So, so, so what we are going to do is now, uh, let me just quickly uh, show you. I have already copied our, uh, this uh, mm, tutorial code, right? Mm -hmm. A basic app into my Vim. Okay. So it is in uh, kpm slash chem. Okay. Ooh, let me just uh, move. I think we're just not seeing the bottom line of your window there. Okay. Hold on. Uh, okay. Okay. Let me then. There we go. I now think, can you? Yeah, see it? and now we can see it. Yeah, very good. So now we are inside uh, our 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 project, right? Where we have our database and uh, our services. Apart from it, there are other files also. We'll go through them quickly. But before that, let me just quickly play around with this cloud shell. So one of the good thing, uh, DJ, which I liked about here is the moment you say edit, right? So it is going to, it also has an editor spot also, inbuilt one. Yes, that's, and in fact, Lucia was just making a reference to, I think that's, so it's got this online sort of IDE, um, yeah, which, it, which is really nice. Very nice, it's very nice. And it will let, let, let it open. So, and meanwhile, uh, okay, you see here. So, yep. so it has, uh, open my complete uh, uh, kind of a storage space mm -hmm. in the web, uh, VM which we have. So we have our Capum. Inside it, I have our regular uh, the, the data CDS definition. Stuff, right? and, yep. Yeah, so the same and the cat service also, right? Now, let me just quickly, we need to, because I want to run it locally. Mm -hmm. Hold on. So one second, I think I need to, because each time you close this uh, uh, VM, right? The this thing is a thermal. So the whatever installation I do, those normally wiped out, right? So That's right. Yes, it's only the stuff in your home directory that persists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I although I can use uh, run it via dot node modules the pathwise, but I think it will not take much time. I'm just quickly installing a of course, CBS yeah. run. One solution for this might be to use NVM and install Node within your home. So um, yeah, that's something we could look at next time. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, so, so let's just quickly run it, right? And uh, we have our local host running, right? And all you need to do is click on here, and it will automatically, basically, you see our, you know, we have our all the books and authors we can see, right? Yes. So this is right now not running on a serverless container. It is simply running as a local host. This, this is just right? running in your cloud shell, isn't it? Yes, yes. Like we used to work it in our uh, laptop. Yeah. The same way. So now uh, we'll we'll break from it, and now the first step is we'll we'll be creating our own image, right? So I have the I have my commands ready. Okay? Nice. So just to save time, so we have G Cloud build. I want to build an image. What is the name of this image? Capm three, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want a tag. So I'll say enter, and it will start its processing. So let it happen. Sure. And uh, meanwhile, we'll show you something else also. Okay, so cool. While, while you're transferring there, yeah, Ronnie confirms that with NVM, you, uh, even globally installed packages um, are installed in .NVM in your home. So they, they should good. persist. That's what I use. That's how I do it on the Cloud Shell. Yeah. Very nice. So, so okay, good. So, so okay, one thing I actually forgot. Let's have a look at our Docker file because if you are going to make an image, you need to have a Docker file, right? Mm -hmm. So our Docker file is basically is a note and image, like uh, the, the one which is primarily referred from Lucia's one, right? Then you have a working directory, then I copy my package JSON, then I do an install, then I copy my code, and then I basically mm -hmm. deploy, and then I say run. Yep. So the difference between run and command is, run is going to run when you are making an image, right? And command is going to run when you are going to deploy that image as a container, right? And then it is going to open a. You're going to. It is going to basically run that application. So when that okay. instance starts up, right? So the, the command yes. is then run. Exactly. So now our image is already made, right? Capm three, right? So let's just quickly have a look. 
So if you go down here in this, you see this cloud build, right? Mm -hmm. So this cloud build, you know, why I'm showing you this is sometimes earlier when I was doing it, my image was failing, right? So what you can do is, so, so you can check your build here, Capm3 latest. You go inside and uh, then you can see the logs also. So for example, something happened or some issues happened, you can go and troubleshoot here. For example, let's say I forgot to deploy something or I forgot or I, I added a wrong command, right? Then it will show all the errors here. So this is how you see the your build details, as well as uh, so. Okay, so our image is ready, right? And now the next step is so. Let me quickly go here. So image is ready. Mm -hmm. Now the next step is let's deploy it. Simple, nothing more than that. Okay. So so I will go towards here, right, to the cloud shell, and all you need to do is run this command: Google Cloud beta run deploy. That's it and i gave my path i hope it works <laughs> so so yes the first question it asks is where oh, yeah. do you want to deploy so i say us central uh name is okay and uh so we're now deploying this container that you've just built which is a docker container yeah. through the docker file to, to the cloud run cloud. service so, uh, to the serverless everything serverless. Mm -hmm. so i say i don't want any authentications unauthenticated is allowed so let it run right and uh, then we will it will not take much time it's very quick <laughs> nice and um is the your your docker file for example is that available for folks on the stream to uh study yeah, yeah it is it is uh, i have actually um, you know i have had links for the references nice it is uh, available in my uh, this blog also yeah so exactly here i have everything right so people yeah so, let me let me post while you're doing that let me post a uh, a link to that uh, blog post yeah okay okay so our our um, our app is deployed okay now now i go to here and i go towards cloud run right and i see cap on three it is green that means everything is fine nothing no issues green is good and if you click, yeah if you go inside and you go to logs right it will show all the logs, whichever, you know, it is mostly for your troubleshooting, right? And uh, now the next thing is basically uh, we need to, because we have already run CDS run command, so it is already listening for us. Now, how do we access it is we click here, right? This is the same link which you will see here. Yep. Uh, yeah, right. So I'll just click here and uh, I hope it runs. So mm -hmm. will this be redirecting the traffic to port 80 to port 80. 8080 or whatever it was on the, what we saw Yes, it will yeah. be, yeah, it automatically, you know, the, the, the serverless, because it has its own services and routes, yeah. the containers, and they, in uh, under the hood, they direct it to the disk host. So what is that called? That is more or less, we call it as services in Kubernetes to mm -hmm. expose something to the outer world, node port or something. Yeah. So I will say catalog. I don't see this hyperlinks coming here as of now. I have to dig into that why it is not coming when I deploy. But if you look at this catalog, right? And uh, just wait. So we have our three authors, books, and orders. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now if you want to look at authors, so you have all authors, everything is available. Nice. Right. If you want books, uh, books is also there. Okay, now good thing is, let's say uh, I, I did it wrongly, right? So let's say the, this is not right. So if you look here, the logs, right? They are also getting updated. They will basically tell you who, which endpoint was hit and at what time and everything, catalog, books, author, all these things, right? So, yeah. so th this is a very s a simple way of deploying a, a capm based app to GCR. Right now, uh, before I actually finish, I would like to show you one last thing. No, I'll not take more than two minutes. Okay. okay cool. So, 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 if people are interested in learning more about Cloud Shell, so Cloud Shell has its own set of tutorials. Okay, Cloud Shell tutorials, which are also available on GitHub. Okay, how they work, how they work is basically, uh, for example, uh, you need to run through these tutorials, how, do, how does it work is one second. Let me go to the home directory. Uh, 
Lord, we are full. So there is a command which you can use to basically run these tutorials. So which is basically I'm giving the path cloud shell launch tutorial. Ah, okay. yes. Is it like a wizard type thing? Ah, yes. It is a wizard, and it is hopefully since I want to run Google Kubernetes engine, it is going to help me in that. So mm -hmm. I will say. Uh, 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 one second, I think copy paste mistake. So I said yes. No, that's better. Yeah. By the way, while you're doing that, uh, Helmut is asking, did I understand correct? The cloud function redirects to a permanently running server. Yeah. So 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 basically, uh, when it is when we call from here, so he's asking about how does it go back to that place, mm -hmm. right? So basically, what happens in normally in container is, in order to expose something, you need to have there are two kinds of services. One is to talk internally among the ports, another is to talk exposed to the world. So which is nothing but a node port. So now that node port is internally right because at the end it is a port where it is running right. So that node port is internally redirecting the traffic to localhost 8080. Although this 8080 is not exposed to the out outside world directly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it is. How normally the Kubernetes, uh, the, the containers handle the pods, handle the traffic when they basically talk among themselves. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, so services, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think also um, it, it's only as permanent as as long as as long as uh, Napheat's container is running, right? As long as that instance is running. Yes. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. So then this and this is the this is the quick start tutorial, wizard, yes. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it starts and then you can go ahead and you can create a project. It, it, it tells you everything. So it's very nice. And you have um, uh, n number of, uh, if you look at tutorials, right? I, I think Google has done a brilliant work. So they have, you want a compute quick start. So whatever you want, right? They have these uh, uh, readme files and then you can just give the path and uh, use this command and things will start working. Perfect. So this is. Yeah, so this is a bit about, uh, this is all in my, whatever I have done in the last one week or so. Yeah. That's really, really yeah. nice. Thanks thanks for explaining that to us, uh, Nappy. In fact, just talking about um, the Docker file uh, and also the fact that, you know, the, the stuff that we install outside your home directory in the cloud shell is ephemeral, it goes away when you restart it. Um, I just happened upon um, a new alpha feature, not even beta feature of the cloud shell, which is you can actually build your own shell image. So you can start yes. with a different shell image. And I came across yes. that. Uh, there's also a, uh, um, a a tutorial for that too. Yes, yes, you are right. Basically, because this is already an image. This mm. cloud shell is an image and you can customize it. Exactly, exactly. And uh, how are I supposed to open it? One second. So if I say close, leave, and then I go here and let me it's somewhere, yeah. It's somewhere in there was um, in the links from yeah, when it, you're running the shell. Yeah, yeah it, it is. There. Okay. Oh, it is down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So if I click here, uh, launch code editor. This is cloud shell environment. Yes. That's, this is where yeah. you will see the basic uh, image of the cloud shell, and you can build on top. That's of it. the one. Yes, yeah, right. I could alpha. have. Yeah, I could have added the the our CDS and everything and made a new image. Yes. Right. Let me, I'll try that. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank right. you so much, Napit. Um, I, I think there's a theme here, right? There's a theme of virtual machines or containers, uh, and there's a theme with that of customizing those virtual uh, virtual machines and virtual containers uh, based upon recipes, and then accessing those remotely via the shell. So this is why why I think that the the shell, the environment, the command line is still so important you know, it's, it's, the, it's it's much more important in my eyes than any sort of GUI that we have today um, and of course then it also means that if we collectively can help uh, teach our teach each other uh, knowledge about this stuff in the cloud but also for example like you know the dot files that Ronnie was showing us uh, yeah. get better at using vim and get better at using other product productivity tools like tmux and you know all sorts of things and of course you know CDS is a command line tool then so much the better. So uh, uh, Ronnie and uh, Nappy, that, that was awesome. Um, let uh, us know, folks in the channel right now, 
um, in, in the channel, in the in the stream, uh, either here or in the in the feedback. Of course, let me put the feedback link. In fact, the feedback would be good. Um, feedback episode specific feedback. There we go. Where do I put that? Uh, there. Yeah, give us some feedback. Tweet as well if um, you think it would be great. I think it would be to have uh, Nabit and Ronnie back on to explain a little bit more and go a little bit deeper. Uh, in the meanwhile, you know, we'll do those on a Wednesday, a little bit sort of an off piece. Wednesdays are for me the off piece, slightly uh, you know extended nerdy stuff to go back to what Ronnie was saying before. Uh, but you know, we've reached the top of the hour. Thanks so much, um, and thanks everyone for joining. I know um, a lot of people are on holiday today. It's really great to see you. And uh, Nabit, Ronnie, thank you, thank you. So awesomely. Thank you. Uh, and uh, see you again soon. Artificial intelligence and the cloud are powering major transformations.